Hi everyone, today we're going to discuss the first part of a series of three videos in which I'm going to talk about advanced stuff like model selection and regularization, but specifically for regression. So if you go back to this video, one of the most important messages there was that when you do a linear regression, you have to check your assumptions. And the other idea was related to the fact that when we have a lot of a strong correlation between features, like in this case, you can see that the 2 by 2 correlation is 0.73. We have some weird stuff in, in linear regression. So for instance, BMI is pretty correlated with body fat, but when we include abdomen and thigh, then BMI becomes relevant. As you can see here, that is not very significant. Also, age, for instance, becomes relevant when, when we decide to remove one of these features. So one important question is, how can we deal with this sort of stuff? Another important thing is related to the inclusion of irrelevant parameters. So this is a, f a figure that I've shown before in which different methods are fitted and we are including additional non-informative predictors. So basically we are taking a data set and including random features and you can see that some methods are robust to the inclusion of new variables, but some other methods are really sensitive to those number of features. So again, we need a methodology in order to decide what features are important and what features should I remove from my dataset? I have already covered some of these issues in this series of videos, but today I'm going to focus on things related to linear regression. So the first idea, the first tip that I gave you in those videos was trust your eyes. So plotting is the, one of the most important things. So whenever you have some doubts, I think the, the best advice that I can give to you is plot the data and take a look at, at what's happening there. The second tip is to standardize the input. So when you have inputs that have a low range of variation, especially the related to the, the standard deviation of the data, you can have some misleading results. Tip number three, use built-in variable important metrics. And one interesting thing with the methods that I'm going to show you in this series of videos is related to the fact that linear regression is actually one of the best methods to, to decide what variables are more important. Actually, remember the first video in the series that we said that when we, we have additive terms, so we have a strictly linear regression, the coefficients of the linear regression are basically sensitivity coefficients. And the best tip of all, combine all different methods in order to proceed with that. So let's get into the details on how to implement these things for linear regression. Anyway, you can go back to this video and get familiar with these ideas. Okay, so the main question is how to choose a good model. And I'm going to split this question in three answers. So the first part has to do with make a good use of the data. And this is related to splitting the data in training, testing, and validation. And remember that the idea is that when, when we do a fit, if we use all the data, basically, we're going to reduce a lot the training error. So in this case, the, the, the root mean square error of the linear regression. But the problem is that the, the ability to generalize is going to be really poor. The second idea is defining a good metric. So in the case of linear regression, we are playing with root mean square error, but we can have different metrics and different metrics penalized for different number of parameters. And the third idea is try to remove irrelevant variables. And remember that correlations can be dangerous. And sometimes a high correlation doesn't mean that there is some ca causal influence between variables there. So first things first. So let's go on to talk about the splitting the data. We have discussed this a lot. And basically the idea is that in, in our ideal world in which we have a lot of data and, and data allows to do this splitting, the best thing that we can do is reserve some part of the data for training, one part for validation, and this is going to allow us to decide which is the best model, so which are the hyperparameters of the model. For instance, here we can decide if we have interactions or nonlinear terms or cubic uh, coefficients and so on and so forth and then leave one part of the data for testing. Okay, this, as I was saying, this only can work if we have a lot of data. We have a middle ground here, so imagine that we don't have so much data, so the best thing that we can do is try to split just in training and testing, and we are going to use cross-validation in order to play a little bit with that. So instead of using all the data for training and some for testing, we are going to do some validation inside by splitting this in different folds. So remember that cross-validation is really informative and actually we can use cross-validation even for linear regression. So instead of using LM, you use again the train function of the caret library. You can say that we are going to repeat this linear regression over and over again. And the good thing is that instead of having 
only one inform one set of information about r square and adjusted r square and the relevance of the coefficients, for instance, like the residual standard error, we can do uh, obtain all the summaries of, of all the resamples of the tenfolds. So if we are using tenfold cross validation. We have repeated experiments ten times. So here we can see the range of validity of the room mean squared error and the range of validity of r square. For instance, if I take a look at this uh, graph, I can see that r square can vary from 0.31 from 0.74. So basically this model is really crap because depending on the, the data points that you're using for the faults that you are using, you can obtain a very robust, sorry, a very good uh, correlation or a very poor correlation. And this is a good indicative that the model is really bad. So first important message, never do just one regression, do a lot of regressions. For instance, if you use tenfold cross validation, you are automatically doing 10 regressions. And so you can avoid this sort of stuff. Okay, the next idea is how can we decide which metric is good? So how good is our regression? So here we have used a root mean square error and R squared, but these metrics are not taking into account the number of parameters. And if you go back to the video on polynomial regression, we discussed there that different degrees of the polynomial can provide different R squares. So here you have one of the first metrics introduced in order to reduce the bias. So instead of minimizing just the error, which would be represented by this term, I'm going to penalize for by the number of parameters. So basically I'm saying I want to minimize this, but taking into account that the larger the number of parameters, the larger is going to be this. And also I'm going to include an estimation of the root mean square of errors taken from the previous candidate model. So this, as I was saying, this was one of the first metrics introduced, but it's not very used, uh, used these days. On the other hand, one of the most extended uh, metrics over there is the called AIC or Akaiq Information Criterion. It's more or less the same idea, but here I'm dividing by, by the estimation of the error. And this is a kind of way in which I'm normalizing by the error introduced by any parameter. So again, I'm correcting by the error, but I'm still keeping this penalty with the number of parameters. Another popular method is the called the Bayesian Information Criterion. And instead of using just the numbers, uh, number of parameters here and these two here, I'm correcting by the logarithm of the number of uh, elements in my data set. So the larger my data set, the larger is going to be the penalty here. And we have already covered adjusted R square. And adjusted R square is basically correcting R square using again the number of parameters that I'm using in, in the model. So as a summary of this first video, so first thing that you have to do is use methods like cross-validation or splitting your data set into training, testing and validation. And the second thing you have to do is in order to improve your, me your, your measurement, not only reduce the error, so reduce the error penalized by the number of parameters.